Welcome to ZapTest Tutorials. In this lesson, we will learn how to write a cross-platform script. We will use the demo script from Lesson 4 and enhance it by adding support for iOS and Android devices along with Windows OS. We have connected the iOS and Android devices. If you do not have two devices, you can still follow the instructions for one of the devices. Let's start adding two iterations to our data table, one for iOS and one for Android. For now, we can just duplicate the first row. The first operation in this script is the launch method. This method can launch applications on a local or a remote device, both mobile and desktop. To learn more about this method, please check out the relevant documentation on our portal. For the iOS device, modify the launch command argument to iOS, followed by the browser that is being used, for example, the Zap browser. For the Android device, we can use the Chrome browser. So we type in Android Chrome. This parameter will launch the Chrome browser on the first connected Android device. Before running the script, we will learn a few commands which are very useful when working with iterations. Our first command is the iteration variable. With this command, we can set the data table to skip to a specific row or iteration. The second command, stop test, stops the execution of the test, and the third command, stop iteration, finishes the current iteration immediately and advances to the next row in the data table, then restarts the execution of the script with the next iteration. We know this script works on a Windows machine, so we don't need to run the first row or iteration in the data table. To skip it, add the stop iteration command when the script runs the first iteration, and add another stop iteration command after the launch command. Run the script. ZapTest will launch the browsers on both iOS and Android devices. Notice the views look quite different. Let's enhance our script to support it. After clicking the combo box object, we can see that the selection dialog looks somewhat different. This is the platform dependent part of the script. Each platform can have its own implementation of the combo box. When using the ZapTest Enterprise Edition, we can write a custom function which would perform the item selection. But when using the ZapTest Free Edition, we should repeat this step for each combo box in the application which we are going to do now. Let's scan the iOS device view from the Zap Viewer using the GUI map. Remove all the objects except one of the list items. Here we will use the OCR, Image, and Area objects to perform with Combo Box. The Combo Box list appears to have an arrow at the bottom. We'll see it as a parent object for the area with menu items. The arrow has no text, so we should set the property recognition type to image. Then, add the area object and set all the relative objects like we did in the previous lessons. The area object will help us specify the search region and improve reliability. Now for the Android device. We create a new view, scan the Android application from the Zap Viewer, keep only one object that will click on the item. In our case on Android, it looks quite simple because here the combo box object covers the entire screen. However, in other cases, a combo box could get a tad more complicated on an Android device. But how do we tell ZapTest to perform certain operations on the iOS and other operation on the Android? The main application object has a neat method, getPlatformType. This method retrieves the platform type of the current device that is used in the script. This method only works if the launch method was used prior to it at least once in the script. We can use the getPlatformType method in if-else statements to add support for iOS and Android. Let's do that with the iOS device first. Preset the list object text, and then click on the list item to finish the selection process. Then add else if statement for Android. Preset the list object text. Then click the object. Let's try to run the script. We select iteration values for iOS or Android and see how ZapTest operates with combo boxes there. We can see it works just fine. We should use the same objects for the second combo box item, but with different preset text from the data table. As we have already learned, 
In ZapTest Enterprise Edition, we can create a custom function which will automatically detect the platform and reuse this procedure multiple times in multiple scripts, so we would only have to write it once. That's it! We have written a platform-dependent code for selecting the combo box items in various platforms. Let's check to see what the date picker control looks like for the iOS device. We will use another object for calendar table. The day names line. Monday to Thursday. Add a new object, weekdays. Update the text property and set partial OCR recognition. It will allow us to find parts of the text. Set the weekdays as a parent object to calendar. That's it! This will work on Windows and iOS platforms. Now let's check to see what the date picker control looks like on the Android device. We can see that the Android keyboard hides part of the date picker control. This means that we should add an additional step to support Android platforms. We will use the right mouse click to hide the keyboard and add the code which will do that. After clicking on the control, perform a right mouse click using the right click method. So we write the if statement and then use the date label for the right click operation. Now run the script and check how combo boxes and date picker manipulations look like after all these updates. Do not forget to set the format of the date cells and data table to text. The last thing to update is the result page. In our case, on the iPad we are using, the results look similar to Windows desktop output. In the case of our Android mobile device, we may need to scroll down the page to read the flight information. To obtain all flight numbers, we can use programmatic loops, which are only available with the ZapTest Enterprise Edition. As an alternative, we have a method. The scroll to method which allows us to scroll to the exact object with a single command. Let's try it. Scan the results page and keep the flight label. For scroll to, we will use some of the bottom object. For example, the date and time. We will also add the related flight number object, which we will use to get the flight number. Next, we will update the text color for our flight label and flight number objects to white as well. It's time to add the code. We will use the if-else statements and add special steps for the Android device. Use the scroll to method to scroll to the bottom of the results. Scroll to having main parameter, delta. It will define the amount of a single scroll in view height percentage. If delta is positive, scrolling goes up. If delta is negative, scrolling goes down. Let's set it to minus 50. The remaining parameters of the scroll to method are optional and can be skipped at this time. Next, use your new object to get the flight number with the get text method. Our script is now ready for cross-platform execution. Remove all iteration conditions and stop iteration breakpoints. Our first iteration is running on the local Chrome browser, which is also fully compatible with IE, Firefox, etc. The second iteration is running on the iOS device. We added conditional steps that work only with the iOS combo box controls. Other than the objects in these steps, everything else is similar to the Windows part. And the third iteration is running on the Android device. In addition to the combo box controls, we wrote code to handle a device-dependent issue with date picker control, which was hidden by the keyboard. All three iterations are successfully completed. We can now check the results to obtain more information about the execution process. Thank you for using ZapTest.